I'm here on Loloata Island. Loloa meaning one and ta meaning hill in Papua New Guinea. It's on this small island not far from Port Moresby that my New Guinean adventure begins. Papua New Guinea, more often known as PNG, is a beautifully untamed land. Located just south of the equator and to the north of the eastern tip of Australia, this is a raw tropical paradise, the likes of which is becoming a rare find on a planet crawling with humans. With 85% of the main island carpeted with rainforest, the plant, bird and animal species are as varied as they are spectacular. Like this little guy, it's a marsupial native to PNG. It's a lemur-like possum, and being a marsupial, they have a pouch like a kangaroo. I was lucky to have a close encounter with a little girl. Here we have a little cuscus, probably a couple of years old, this little cuscus. She lost a mother, and she's now become a little adopted pet. They're gorgeous little creatures with googly eyes, but the problem is that their fur is so soft and beautiful that the Papua New Guinean people use them for custom dresses, sing sing, and hats, billum hats, and also bags that they can carry. They have a strong prehensile tail, which is naked towards the end. There's I reckon for maximum grip. Add these impressive climbing claws, and a grip an executive would be proud of, and you have a well-adapted creature whose main enemy is humans. Not this human, though although she found it difficult to distinguish me from one of the local trees. Well, they say never work with animals or children. Yeah. <laughs> in this episode of Roar of the Wild, I'll dive on spectacular wrecks, dance in a sing sing, really feed the PNG pets, and bask in this unexpected paradise. In a land where the birds are spectacular and the wallaby is quite small, it came as no surprise I was about to witness another phenomenon. My guide here is Franco, the snake man, yeah, yeah. and we're searching for the sea snakes that have come ashore on the high tide. Snake hunting. It wasn't long before we found our prize. The black prize. and white banded ones, right? right. Oh, here we got one. Look at this guy. Oh, he's climbing. He's strong. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it, that they can just come out of the sea and come onto the land? Because not many sea snakes do this, no, do they? No. So to pick him up, you just yeah. uh, grab him on the tail, yeah. and then just slowly lift him off the bottom. Oh, 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 oh. oh this is a feisty one. Did you see oh, the gecko yeah. run? Oh. <laughs> Yeehaw, we have action. Here we go. Wow, look at that. Yeah. See his tongue going in and out? Yeah. I've seen these guys hunting underwater a lot and they always yeah. use their tongue when yeah. they're hunting the fish. Yeah. Our poor little snake has just thrown up an eel. I thought the eel was like part of its inside, but you can see how big yeah. this eel is that it's eaten. This fella is a band of sea cray. These guys are highly venomous. The good thing about these snakes is that they rarely bite humans because they have very small mouths and fangs. Good thing too, they are everywhere. Well, as long as the sea snakes are on land, I might as well get in the sea. So the next stop was Medane. First day on the job and I get to drive. This <laughs> way? Yep, yep. Diving in Papua New Guinea with its clear waters, wonderful reefs and fascinating dive sites is irresistible and world class. Well, we've made it to Medang and we're about to dive Magic Passage. This is a drift dive and there should be some big fish action. Most popular of the passages and very aptly named, Magic Passage bottoms out at 100 feet. On the change of the tide, this ocean alleyway sees a rush hour of schooling fish. A thriving garden of sea fans grows at the seaward mouth of the passage, their open polyps sieving the changing tidal waters for food. Medang is dotted with sunken warships and aircraft. This dive site is known as the Bomber. Here lies some of the results of Japanese anti-aircraft guns around Medang in 1943. 
Many Allied aircraft were felled. Most famous of these in diving circles is the B-25 Mitchell bomber, which lies at 60 feet near Wongat Island. The plane is practically intact, and several of the crew survived to swim to the nearby island, only to be captured by the Japanese and later executed. Friendly villagers hid the pilot, however. Although eventually captured, he survived the war. Now this object of war is an artificial reef, providing shelter to many species of plant and fish life. We're at Bill Bill Village and the singing and dancing is just about to begin. A sing sing is a traditional ceremony thrown for a young man once he comes of age, often after his circumcision. You can see all their costumes in every village is different and unique. Plus they sing about what's in their environment. Birds, trees, animals. Perhaps it's their fishing. Perhaps it's their children. I love to join in and truly feel the essence of ancient ceremonies like this. But I soon realise I may be in the wrong I'm circle. I'm a man. I think I should be in the other one. I joined my sisters and appreciated the warmth of my special host, as well as busting a few moves. Next up we go to the village of Tufi and travel by canoe through the fjords in search of the famous bird of paradise. As we came into land, I was excited to experience the spectacular and completely unexpected fjords here. They're over 90 metres deep and rise vertically out of the water to over 150 metres. Thank you! Yeah, this is great! Tufi district, the traditional way of life plays a very important role amongst the clansmen. Supreme authority is maintained by four major clans here. This was indeed a welcome dance and I felt very welcome. I think all this love went to my head and as usual I just had to join in. <laughs> This was very amusing for the kids. I loved their squeals of giggles. <laughs> it wasn't long before we were on the water, headed for the fjords for my rare avian encounter. The Tufi region is an untouched mecca for divers, but above the water is pretty special too. Everywhere I looked was postcard picture perfect and achingly beautiful. I'm at Kafure village and I'm waiting for my guide William who's going to take us looking for the hornbill and the bird of paradise. We're going up into the end of the fjord into the mangoes. Hello, how Hello. are you? Lin. I'm fine. Nice to meet you. Same to you. Okay, do I get a paddle? No. Just relax? You just relax and... Uh... This couldn't be any further removed geographically or in time, but I still felt like Cleopatra on the Nile. There's a stand of trees just above one of Tufi's fjords where birds of paradise display at dawn and dusk each day. I'm told we might also see a mighty hornbill known as the Kokomo. We're just heading into the mangroves here. There's a number of other canoes, native canoes as well. They're all making their way up into these little snaking rivers that go up into the back of the fjords. It's beautiful. It's so peaceful once you get into the back of the mangroves. It's like a forest of mangroves out there. And you can hear the birds so clearly. Listen. Just the sound of canoes and birds. They're talking to me. nature and seeing how these guys have such good affinity with nature makes me wonder why we surround ourselves with concrete jungles. I think these guys have the right idea.
time to walk in the mangroves. The crew made the canoes secure and my PNG education continued. What are all those palms across there? Uh, those are nipa palms. We use them for the roof making, for the house roofs. And this is what you use to decorate yourself? Yeah. Custom dress? Yeah, custom dress. Papua New Guinea is the land of the birds of paradise. Over 700 species of birds can be found here, including 38 of the 43 known species of the exotic bird of paradise. Oh, OK, OK, OK. That's the bird of paradise. Yeah, that is it. Wow. Sometimes they don't notice it still. They have to dance. They have to dance in it. I from tree to tree. So you've seen them dancing? Yeah. Wow. That called for a drink, and young Benson used a really wicked bottle opener for a taste of the freshest PNG cocktail. Thank you. Fresh coconut. Press. Cheers. <sighs> Best thing about hanging out with the locals, you'd never starve in the jungle or go thirsty. The cultural festival is an important link to these proud people's ancestors and the traditions that have carried their gentle spirits into the 21st century. Now that I'd seen the real thing, it wasn't hard to do some bird spotting here as well. You can see these fancy headwear that they wear, a lot of the birds that we saw this morning. Next, I get wet and love the view below Papua New Guinea's unexpected paradise. Situated in this archipelago of reefs and islands, a place dubbed the pelagic capital of Papua New Guinea, Kaviang, sits like a proverbial jewel in the sea. Well, we made it to Kaviang. Kaviang is in the northern part of Papua New Guinea. It's here that we'll get some fantastic wide-angle action, including great pelagics, but there's lots of smaller stuff as well. The plan today also includes a dive on another wreck from World War II. Our first location was called the Deep Peak, and with the visibility in this area seldom below 30 metres, this was going to be a treat. At 39 metres down, the skeleton of a Mitsubishi biplane loomed. Lying upside down, this Japanese float plane is an interesting legacy of the three-year Japanese occupation of New Island during World War II. New Island is the anglicised name for Kaviang. Only recently discovered, the two cowl-mounted guns and the rear-mounted flexible guns of the biplane are still in position, but long since silenced. The white sandy bottom brightened the whole scene and made a dramatic contrast to the black coral growing on the wreck. The variety of life and the quality of the diving here even had Dorian, our dive master, enthusiastically planning the next expedition. What I like about caving is that there's a lot of big stuff when you're diving, but there's also a lot of small stuff. It's the diversity not only of dive sites, but of marine life. I think we'll go to Albatross Channel tomorrow, and that's probably one of my favourites. We made it to Albatross Passage. Now we're in the Bismarck Sea side of Cape Man. Regarded by many as one of the world's top ten dives, the water moves into this narrow passage and hits a wall, running across the entrance, setting up the ideal current to attract schooling pelagics. That is, sea life from the open ocean, including grey reef, white tip and silver tip sharks. I was in heaven. How you say, woohoo, underwater. The more you look, the more you see. You can't miss these big fellas cruising around. 
Then the liquid sky above me was filled with clouds of amazing sea life. A lush garden of ever-changing colours was wafting gently in the current. There's always something preying on something else down here. That was awesome. There were sharks, mackerel, big old trevally, tuna, just about everything you could possibly want to see. Not to mention the little stuff, like the pygmy seahorses. Awesome dive. And then you get to hang in the current. Another dramatic dive was the De Yang, a Taiwanese fishing vessel confiscated from poachers and purposefully sunk in the late 80s. It lies on its starboard side at 30 metres on Yuka Reef and is home to many. Saturday morning here in Cave Yang and we're at the local markets. We've come to have a look at some of the produce that they have. Notice how fresh the fish is. There's a lot of really interesting things at this market, things that I'm not quite used to what they are. So what are these white eggs here? Those eggs. Turtle eggs? Yes. They're already laid and they dig up the nest. Yes. So we've just done a little bit of wheeling and dealing for tonight's dinner and what we have on the menu is mud crab. Now let me show you a couple of these babies. A monster crab. You can still see they're very fresh because they're still kicking, they're still very much alive and they're not long out of the mud. Still have girl crabs or jennies, which in Australia might be legal, but here, well they don't have lots of regulations like us. So for this grand total, 35 kina, 20 bucks. Half by half? Half for one kina? Now these are really sweet, yummy bananas. They have bigger bananas at this market, but they're not so sweet. They're actually cooking bananas. So what we want is the little bananas, because they're the best. This is the fruit and veggie part of the market. As you can see, there are lots of fruits and veggies. <laughs> you can see they're not lacking in vitamins or minerals in Papua New Guinea. Mm, this stuff's really good. Yet another feast organised. Next up, I get to hand feed some pretty slippery pets. We are in Yarai Bina village and we're about to look for some freshwater eels. These are some of the largest freshwater eels that you'll ever see. I met up with Kathy and heard about her collection of speckled green and grey freshwater eels. Territorial, they find their own spots in the river bank. Yeah. So I will spill this, the sense of smell is like a dog, so when you turn around you see them come up. Now what did you say, what type of eel? Aguila rhina. Aguila rhina. Aguila. Aguila rhina. And, and simply long fin. With just a ah. sniff of some fishy smelling water flowing downstream, the pet soon came a running. Ah, oh. oh, it's coming right to your feet. Can I feed him? Yeah, sure. You can. In fact, it's a her. Fantastic. It's a her. How can yeah. you tell it's a her? One is Oops. one to five, oh. five meter long is her. Oops, we lost it. Here it is. Look, look. Just throw it between their nose. Okay. Not too close because when they jump, they might think your finger is Is feed. part of their food. Part of their okay. food. Have they got teeth? They have teeth which is retractable. The pulling effect will bring their teeth forward. I pick them up. Yes. This is a special There we go. Oh, oh, they're, they're, they're very, very slippery, slippery and very yeah. classic. <laughs> the giant marmorata eels we see here are active at night, feeding on a wide range of prey, especially crabs, frogs, and fish. They're harmless to humans, and the experience in the last I had with Kathy and her slippery companions confirmed the warmth with which I was welcomed anywhere I went in Papua New Guinea. Look, it's there. But there were more friends to meet and feed. 
Here we have Gordon the sea eagle. The best thing about this pet is he's allowed to fly and he's allowed to go wherever he wants. You can see their sharp claws. Here you go. I gave Gordon a little snack and we got on just fine. What we both didn't realise is that we would soon be serenaded by a local band. This is definitely the unplugged mix, but enthusiasm and smiles made up for the volume. One day they'll be famous. <laughs> and we can say we saw them when they started. <laughs> As I wandered around, there wasn't a place that wasn't at once fascinating and incredibly peaceful. And here, when you want dinner to be as fresh as possible, you catch it, just as the sun is sizzling into the sea. This is team fishing. What the boys do is they have some boys that go up there and they chase the fish down into the nets. That's what these guys are doing right now. They'll beat the water and they'll make as much noise as they can so the fish come down into the nets. The thing I've enjoyed most about Papua New Guinea is seeing the people. They seem to be at one with their environment. They live off the land and the sea. They build their houses out of natural products and there seems to be less waste and far less pollution. Perhaps we should take a leaf out of their book, try not to change them too much and even learn a little.